We are Sorted, a group of mates who have your back when it comes to all things food. From cooking battles to gadget reviews Man, it's not worth it. and cookbook challenges to a midweek meal packs app. Crack your eggs and bake. We uncover the tools that'll help us all cook and eat smarter. Join our community where everything we do starts with you. Now you guys know that we love to put new food innovations to the test here in our kitchen. Today, no different. Typically, I might find them as I travel or go to expos and more importantly from your comments, but today all the products we're looking at have come from one event that I was invited to speak at a couple of weeks ago, based on an event that showcases incredible young entrepreneurial minds who are doing incredible things around sustainable future for food. It interested my geeky mind, so I thought I'd bring them here to see what James, our chef, and Barry, our normal, have to say about them. Why don't I get invited to talk at events? <laughs> <laughs> Please, lift the cloche. <gasps> oh. Now you know how this format is. It's going to be one of those. Lots of strange things in bowls. Is it strange though? That is rice. They are rice grains. Shall grains I of rice. tell him what it is? Or what are you talking about? Wanna... No, it's clearly not rice, Barry. Oh, sorry, am I missing something? Is it, Mike? Do you know what it is? Of course it's rice. Oh, I can you I hope. <laughs> <laughs> so this is rice from Rice Inc. So the thing here is four billion people on the planet eat rice on average once a day. And yet 30% of all the rice grown is wasted long before it gets into the supply chain. And that's 26 million tons of rice, and that can go an awful long way. It's a problem I had no idea existed. Well, so technically, they run a laundromat for rice. They dry it so that farmers can take their paddy their rice to them, uh, they can lease their machines and they dry the rice so that they're able to store it or sell it at a later date so it doesn't just get wasted straight away. So the reason it's wasted is because it spoils? Yeah. In the sun drying process, which is normally like a seven day process of allowing the sun to dry the rice before you can take it to market. Well, we put together a great dish, members have put together a great dish. This is jasmine rice. They're also doing things much closer to home. So even in London, every bag you buy in the UK, they also donate a bag to a food bank. But if I knew I could buy this rice and I'm contributing to something that's quite important, then I'd feel quite good about myself. I know what you're thinking though. How much is it in comparison to other rice? You can't help it, you've ingrained it into us. Grained! James. I was, didn't mean it. I did, you I did mean, mean it. it. You did I really mean it. Didn't. You can as soon as I said that. it, I realised, but I didn't mean it. That's a two kilo bag. Would you like to guess how much that is? A fiver? I'd expect to pay about four pounds for two kilos. So three pounds a kilo. Three pounds a kilo, yeah. So that bag there, two kilos, comes in at eight pounds, which is actually less than a bag of premium tilde jasmine rice, which is quite interesting. I, I was quite surprised by that. So this is already a prize-winning company. They've won the Holt Prize, which was co-hosted by Bill Clinton, the United Nations, and it's like the world's most sustainable food prize. So they're obviously onto a good thing. And if it can scale, then there is the potential to start to eke at that 26 million tons of rice that's wasted, and that will feed an awful lot of people. It'll definitely make me think next time I'm buying rice. Ready for another? Please lift the cloche. This one I will be interested in. Your reaction. It's banana. Banana ketchup. Banana, it's like banana barbecue sauce. You've said it, it's yeah. a ketchup. It's right. banana ketchup. This is Fatosa Gourmet. It is an excellent way of using up. I nearly said inappropriate, but that's not the word I was looking for. Unusable bananas. What's <laughs> <laughs> okay. well, an inappropriate banana, yeah. Banana. <laughs> the favourite suggestion of Fabrico's friend who brought me that very jar. Patatas Bravas. He's done the patatas and Banana forgotten the bravas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really nice. Really, really nice, actually. And for someone who doesn't particularly like bananas, yeah. that is a compliment. <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> That's great. Banana ketchup is not a new thing, though, is it? Mm. It's like, that, that is a thing. This kind of solution is something that uh, the company is doing to save the ones that never make it to market because they're crooked or the wrong shape or overripe or underripe or a bit squished. 
And then also there are bananas wasted in the UK. How many do you reckon we waste in the UK? Every day. 26. 26 bananas thousand. a day. 26,000. I don't know, two million a day. Wait, 100,000, 75,000, 50,000, 75,000. Stop backtracking. 75,000. 1.4 million bananas are thrown away each and every day in the UK. I said in two the UK. million. It doesn't count. Is that not disgusting? I said, I said two million. That's, it, that is insane, isn't it? So clearly, not just in the UK, Brazil, globally, this is an issue and a problem that, that requires solving. Would you buy it over other ketchups? Can you see it having a place in your pantry? Yeah, it's something new. Mm. It's delicious. I wouldn't use it all the time, but it's a, it's a great option to have. I agree. I'd buy it in addition to ketchup, mm. tomato ketchup. How much do you think a jar of this sells for? £4.50. Fiverr. Would you both be willing to pay both of those prices? Not combined, individually? Yes. Would you, however, be willing to pay £2.68 for that jar? Yes. Please. Current exchange rate. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds like an overwhelming all-round success. On par price with a regular tomato ketchup, but saving bananas. From a man who doesn't... It's good. I don't buy bananas. Mm. I don't like bananas but I do quite like that ketchup. Well, we've only got another one for you. Mm. If you sniff it, lick it, nibble it, you might get close to knowing what it is. They're not gonna get this. It's quite bitter, isn't it? It's a little, little bit apple-y. Apple? What I don't know. It? It's really sweet. More like butternut squash or something ridiculous. <laughs> Hang know. of shame of James's oh. head there. He didn't like that guess. What is it? They do a number of flavours. Mango, pineapple, but this one is Mr. Jackfruit. So James, you're not a fan? It's quite Moorish mm. and it tastes a bit, a bit apple-y, a bit pear-y and a bit custardy. It's almost vanilla-y. Mm, yeah. For you, you really agreed. I went, out, I went out on a limb there. <laughs> You heard to custard go, and yeah. just your mind just played yeah. word association. Yeah, I expect him to go, you know, you mug. So, Jolly Fruit is 100% handcrafted by rural women farmers all over the world. No added sugar, no preservatives, just bold flavour packed with the vitamins and sun dried. The bit I find fascinating is the average local daily wage in most of these cooperatives is $2 a day but Jarley Fruit are paying $15 a day. And if you've got a phone on you, there's a QR code on the front. And the great thing is, every single bag can be traced back to the community in which it came from. That is cool, isn't it? 100% transparency around the provenance and the communities it's helping. That's really cool. So each of the products that you're reviewing today are finalists in a competition for the event that Ebba spoke at. So these have been through rounds of testing, judging, research and due diligence so that we know what they're claiming is actually robust and true. So that's why this is really exciting to me. I think this sounds amazing. So you've also got Mango Rama and Party Pineapple. Oh, James, what's your fun fact on the back of your packet? Mango trees reproduce by themselves. It takes two to tango, one to mango. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like my life. <laughs> If you buy four packs, that's two pounds in weight of fruit that's saved, that would otherwise have been wasted, and one woman's livelihood transformed. How much for four packs of fruit? 12 pounds for four. 15 pounds, 15, 15 pounds. 16.50, so it's 21 dollars. So just over four pounds per bag, would you buy that? Uh, we already buy quite a lot of dried mango and other dried fruits. I think they're similar sort of bags for about half the price but I have no idea how they're sourced. I can imagine that prices out 90% of people. It's almost irrespective of whether you like the product or not, the company itself are doing something amazing that let's just hope catches on. Yeah, it's way bigger than that. It's the whole food should not be this cheap. But we're conditioned into saying that's too expensive for us, as we just have. You're kind of right, the food system's a bit broken and companies like Jolly Fruit are breaking that. Let's finish with a potential game changer. Oh, and, really? And we've had some game changers. Stop it. That's not how you left a clash. I did. I think I know what this is. It's sweetener. Mm. It's really nice. 
It's quite cooling as well. Cooling and metallic. It's like putting a cold marble in your mouth. You're right. Mm. Is that nice? No. <laughs> <laughs> but I can imagine you're not supposed to eat it like this. So this is xylitol. So oh. it is an alcohol and therefore like menthol chemically has that cooling. But this particular stuff is made by Hilinat, a Mexican company who are doing some pretty incredible things. The founder of Hilinat came up with this concept because in the later years his dad was diagnosed with diabetes but refused to change his eating habits. His sister was training to be a dentist and was seeing the phenomenal problems with kids tooth decay and cavity problems. And that's two things in his family inspired him to find a better way of creating xylitol, which at the time was very expensive and not particularly sustainable. How do you make xylitol? It's often made from birch trees, but often other vegetable matter. However, there's a lot of toxic by waste. So it's very expensive and it's not great. What Hilinata found is a much better way of producing it and rather than using vegetable matter that needs growing in the first place, using agricultural waste. This one caught my interest most because I just wanted to see how it does behave. So I've created some food. Oh, oh. cinnamon, sugar, churros, cajeta, cake, homemade jam, and horchata, all using Hilinat. So these are all sorted recipes, and in each case, I've just subbed out the same weight of sugar for the same weight of Hilinat. That's where, for me, it's interesting if it is a direct one-to-one -one replacement for sugar, but is lowering calories and lowering carbohydrates because of our humongous obesity problem globally. Does that cake taste like cake? A sweet cake. It's got a slightly different texture to it. <laughs> but I can't work out if that's the sugar or not. What kind of cake is it? Vicky sponge. Oh, right, okay. I don't know if that's working. It, it behaved a little bit differently it? in the bake. Yeah, it behaved a little bit differently in the bake. It didn't cream with the butter the same way. However, once the batter was finally finished with the eggs and the flour and everything else, it was a cake batter. But it's baked differently. It has a closer texture and it's more like um, more like Madeira cake. It's, yeah, it's pasty. What do you think of the jam? Because I said I did one for one. I actually used half the amount in the jam. Sounds good. And it's jammy. The consistency's Quite there. Tart. It's sweet with a little bit of tartness. Ooh, tart. So not only is it 40% less calories, 75% less carbohydrate, but it's also half the amount. Mm. How about the churros? So talk to us about how it behaved. Well, this is just a tossing process. So uh, I just took out the fryer and tossed it in the sugar. I think again, because they are larger granules, it hasn't clung That's to my question, yeah. the churros quite the same. In the cajeta, the great color and the great flavor from the sauce, but again, it's not thickened the way that caramelized caramel does, but xylitol does not caramelize. It's not very good in recipes that you need sugar in liquid form. Because it's coated on the outside, I'm getting that cooling sensation, as well as the sweetness. And that's quite nice. It's something, again, it's embracing how different it is. I was going to say it's not very nice. Oh. For me, it doesn't, it doesn't work. It's, it's, it's weird, it tastes weird, it tastes wet. As soon as you dissolve it in a liquid, jam and milk, it's great. What are your overall thoughts? Like, how are you responding to it? Do you think it, it does enough of a job? I, I never use sugar. I'm so sorry. I'm the same. Oh. I never have sugar in my house. Um, and if I do, it's a really small little bit and I'll use it for bread and, you know, the odd chocolate fondant if I'm feeling fancy. <laughs> <laughs> that is so <laughs> chefy. No, it's not. It takes 15 minutes. No normal just rustles up a chocolate fondant. I'm not even lying, that happens. <laughs> so how much for that bag? that bag? Four or five quid. Eight, eight pounds. 200 pesos, which equates to just over eight pounds. Oh, there you go. Taylor, <laughs> great guessing. So a lot more expensive than sugar, um, but that is partly because of its new innovation and the way they're doing it and the small scale they're working at. If they can make it cost effective for health food cafes and brands and people like that, I can imagine it'll, it'll be crazy successful. Okay, so of the four, which do you think is likely to make the most difference in the next few years? I think rice ink, because I feel like they have the best chance of making a difference in the place that they've chosen to make a difference. So like, food waste seems to sit at the heart of a lot of these problems. The jolly fruit, 
um, the rice and the banana um, ketchup as well. But I'm just going with the one that I understand the best that I can, adapting into my life will be really easy. The banana ketchup one for me was a standout. That's probably the most poignant thing you've said. We okay. all eat three times a day. How often do we actually think about it? Over to you guys. Which of those products are your favourite? Who gets your vote? And if you like seeing us discuss these food trends, then give the video a like and we'll make some more. And we'll make sure that the details of all the four products and companies that we've talked about today are in the link down below, along with links to the event where you can see the six other finalists, 10 in total. Uh, the Thought for Food finale is happening on World Food Day. That's October the 16th. Go and check it out because there's going to be a winner. <laughs> no one knows who it is yet. Yes, there is, Ben. <laughs> that's the, do you like that? That's the, that's the cliffhanger I lent it on. Before you go, just a quick shout to say thanks to all of you who are using and sending us your thoughts on our PAX app. We wanted to create a tool to help you boss your midweek meals, cut down on food waste, and reduce the cost of your weekly food shop. And you are helping us do just that, so thank you. We want to make this as accessible as possible right now, so if you haven't tried it, you can now for a full month absolutely free. The link is in the description box below. And now for the bloop. I don't know what rice looks like before it's dried. I've just, I've just realised. If you look down that lens and say, oh, it looks like this, then I'm sure we'll be able to find a picture for you. I don't do that. I, do I, Jamie know? does do that. Know or not? He's around there. We could get Jamie in to blink. Do you want to know or not? I'll look it up later. <laughs> <laughs>